Good afternoon everyone, I'm Chris and welcome back to another episode, slightly delayed, of Rift Amps. Good morning everyone, it is now Monday morning, I hope you all had a nice weekend. Uh, I'm straight back in, uh, I'm feeling awful, I've come down with some bugs, so I don't know how I'm going to make it through this week, but uh, needs must. So as you remember, I've just finished off that Ainsley Lister chassis, that one's going to North America. And then I'm just, uh, I need to move on and continue with this one. So we've got all of the transformers and sockets and things mounted. The board is populated. I think I've shown you how we did that. And I've got all my mounts in place. So I've got to do all my flying leads and twisties on the board. And I've also got to do start my chassis wiring in here just like we do on the others. Uh, what else was I doing? Oh, I was doing that Americana LP build, which is, which is here. This is another one for North America. This one's almost done. I've started the heater wiring on it. I've just got to finish that off, finish off the connections there, main switch, the right bulb. And then that one is done. So, uh, yeah, really happy with that. Let's get that back on the shelf. So, yeah. So, Angel is to build. Another one. Let's start making connections inside the chassis. Okay, so for the Ainsley chassis that's heading off to America, the cabinet, we need to get the cabinet drilled and prepped and dressed ready. So... Once Ainsley signed off the chassis, the whole thing can be have final assembly and then boxed up ready for shipping. So, um, what I have noticed, however, which is very interesting, and my cabinet maker did point this out to me, that it would be happening at some point, in that the black Tolex itself, um, the manufacturer has actually changed it slightly. And it's now got slightly more of this sheen, um, yeah, like a sheen to it, a shine as it were, that you can see it picks up the light a bit more than the old stuff did. I haven't got any of the old Tolex here to give you a comparison, but I actually think it feels like it's a higher quality Tolex. I don't know what they've done to it exactly, but it's definitely got more of a sheen to it um, and it feels nicer. And the other thing, probably won't come up on camera, is that the basket weave cloth is blonder it's less orange and more blonde um which i think is more tonally uh sorry not tonally accurate um it's more vintage correct that's what i'm trying to say but this one's looking great so yeah i need to drill the chassis mounts put the handle on uh fit the reverb tank speaker shielding on the roof usual stuff. Let's get at it. This is uh, an early PR-18. I say early, it's kind of a... It's probably five, six years old now, I would have thought. Uh, but you can see it's... This is back when I was using the Jupiters. Look, isn't that interesting? So, what's it coming for? It's just coming for a service and a check-over. This one's got the dwell control on the reverb. 
Uh, so he wants us to bring it up to the latest spec, which we can do no problem, uh, which includes adding a half power switch. So we're going to move the fuse over there, put the half power switch in. A um, couple of tweaks, bits and pieces, but it's got it's already got the nice transformer set in. Uh, and just take it from there. So that's that's cool. The other thing he wanted was someone had replaced the speaker cable with this really short one. So we're going to put a, a super long one on so he can connect it to his uh, Fryer power station. But apart from that, yeah, we're just going to update it to the latest specs. So it will be as a new one would be today, electrically. Um, yeah, apart from that, I don't see any evidence that someone's been inside messing around. But it looks alright. Excellent. Um, I'm going to have to look up the serial number to see when this one was originally built, but I would have thought it would be 2016, 2017, something like that. G12C speaker. Everything else looks all right. Um, and the rear panel, as is common with heat, Tolex is starting to lift. That's just where the you know the hot valve melts the glue. So we're going to have to re-glue that down, no problem at all. All par for the course. And uh, yeah, let's get this one going. Another thing that's happened, which actually does quite get on my nerves, is that I've had a couple of customers book to drop their amplifiers in for service or repair. And over the last couple of weeks, I've had a lot of that where they've arranged to bring the amplifier in. Um, now I'm here on my own. So if I've got the customer arranges to come in, I can't pop out to the post office or to do any other little jobs that I've got to do. I can't go out and cut on amp collection and delivery. I've got to stay here and wait, obviously. So, um, but what's happened is, yeah, three or four times now, people have arranged to drop their amp in at a on a certain date at a certain time. You know, they've emailed or phoned to do that, and then they just haven't shown up. Um, no email, no phone call to say I'm sorry, nothing like that. Just, just dead. I don't know what's going on, but it's quite frustrating because you know I've got a lot of work to do. Um, I've got places to be, things to do, jobs to get done. Not just you know sitting at the build bench wiring amplifiers got repairs to do like i've got collections and all all the other jobs that you want to do when you run a business um and if i'm here waiting for somebody to turn up and they don't i've fallen behind again which is just not fair so um yeah getting quite annoyed with that because you know it, it's my time you're wasting so um yeah it's uh it is part of running a business i know it's just one of those things but um, hopefully it's it's gonna sort itself out um, and that will stop happening okay uh, all the work done half power switch fitted uh, fuse moved over to this side uh, done all the updates and things it's running on the bench it's currently doing 17 watts so it is down a little bit in power could be that the output valves are slightly worn but it still sounds great so we'll leave it for the time being uh, we flick the switch and it drops down to 8 watts which is great so that's doing what it should do you see it just flicks low power high power easy so that's that all done uh, we've updated the tremolo to the latest circuit so this now the tremolo is goes slower and deeper so if I give that the full throb you can see we still get a, a nice fast throb at the top end of the speed range so i'm really happy with that that's the chassis work done made up a nice long speaker cable for him that's one meter so that'll easily connect to his fryette power station where he wants to connect that in and we've soldered the terminals on so they're not going anywhere I've stuck, restuck down the Tolex and started adding some staples just to hold it in place. Once that's all dry, I can remove the masking tape and we'll put some aluminium shielding on and that'll be good to go. 
So yeah, really happy with that. That's the PR18 pretty much done. I don't need to show you putting all that together. And now we've got another really cool amp to look at. So do you remember I was saying I had all those offcuts of FR4 board that wasn't big enough to do amplifier circuits with? Well, I found a reason to use them. I saw um, a picture on Instagram of, of someone building a 69 fuzz face. And they had done it on FR4 as an eyelet board. Now I've got this big old box of old Russian transistors. Need an excuse to use them. And I can now use my, my scrap FR4 as um, to make some pedals. So I'm just going to... I've just made the board up. I'm going to mock up the prototype, get it working, and then we'll take it from there and see if I like it and if it's going to be feasible. Can I build these at a reasonable price point and we do them in a limited run? I think that's a really cool thing to do. I quite like the idea of that. Um, since I launched the Elysium, I'm, I will admit I have started to get into fuzzies more. I'm still not really into the super heavy, super gnarly fuzz type stuff. But, um, I mean, these, these germanium transistors are relatively low gain. So it shouldn't be too over the top and hopefully it remains musical. Um, and I can just start to tweak values and things to get it totally where I want. But, you know, there's only two capacitors in the circuit, so, um, or three, as well mounted to a pot. But, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But interesting, to say the least, that um, don't throw away your scrap stuff. You can make cool stuff with it. Well, here's one you don't see every day. This is an Amplified Nation Amplifonics and Gain. Uh, I'm not entirely sure which Dumble circuit this is based on, but... I'm telling you now, the fit and finish is absolutely fantastic. They've done a really good job on this. It's loaded with a Celestian 65 watt G12M cream back. Multiple speaker outs, effects loop, it's got the DIN foot switch, external bias points. On off and a standby switch. Amplifonics and gain. We'll have to do some research. Reverb tank at the bottom, it's got a mod tank. And this has come in for a general check overs and service. He says there's a, a rattle on some no, low notes, but he doesn't think it sounds like filament rattle, so we'll have to investigate that and see what's going on. But we'll pull the chassis, we'll have a look inside, but the initial impressions from the outside. This is a quality unit. This is great. Really impressed with this. Doesn't feel cheap at all. There's some definitely some premium. All the switches feel good. The knobs have got a nice rotational torque to them. The velour finish is, is really the suede finish, sorry. It's really nice. Yeah, it's done quite well. Let's get it open. Right, chassis is out, and it's relatively simple inside. Uh, we've got the uh, pre-out board here, classic Dumble design. And we've got our filter board here for the power stage. This is the 22 watt version, which is the 6v6 model. There is a 50 watt and 100 watt model version available running 6L6s or EL34. So you've got quite a choice there. Um, but it's a relatively simple design. It's actually really lightweight, this chassis, which is a good thing. Um, I don't have any major complaints about it, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. Whether it's worth, you know, three and a half thousand US dollars is is not a question for me so um but it's certainly it's not crap is what i'm trying to say <laughs> so this is a 230 volt model uh amplifonics and gain so number 15 built march 23rd 2021 
So what is it? It's uh, it says independent two channel amplifier. One of it is a high gain plexi, which is this channel. And then we've also got the clean channel from the Dumble Amplifonics, which is obviously where it's got its name from. So should have done my research before I shot the first part of this, but there you go. Um, so I've, it's, I can't find anything that's rattling other than a little bit of filament noise. It might be, might be uh, socket pins actually, but we'll go through it. We'll get it sorted. But yeah, really interesting amp. Um, just give you some sweep over so you can kind of see the build quality for yourself. Yeah. Hmm, but there we go. So this show you progress on the fuzz face. Uh, I've got the board mounted. Uh, we're just doing a, a prototype here. So we've got all my components on the board. Um, the board is mounted on a standoff. Now, what that does mean is you get a you get a, a uh, machine screw head sticking out the front which I don't like so I'm gonna have to think of a solution to how we can keep the board stable inside um, without that sticking out because obviously that just looks rubbish it's okay for a prototype but if you're gonna bring these to market you've got to improve that do I increase the board size and and use it by mounting the pots to the board and have eyelets for each pot that's one solution. Uh, I've seen some people can use the use the standoffs that don't drill through. They're plastic standoffs that you just attach things to. How secure that is, I don't know. Some people will put the will do it on tag strip and have you know and have some nice cap heads either side. Because I still want top jacks on this and I want uh, top power supply. Um, and I do like the idea of the offset foot switch and, and, uh, and LED. So yeah, I'm gonna have to think about that. But it's also gonna have to the board's gonna have to sit offset like that, just to make room for everything, so I can do my wire runs around to the switch. Because even though it's not a point-to-point -point pedal, it's eyelet board, still gotta make it look neat. So um, yeah, working on that. We'll have to have a think. But again, this is what prototyping is about. You're figuring out your problems. So, yeah, that's it then, guys. Thank you very much for watching. It is, what day is it today? Wednesday today. Um, I've still got this awful head cold thing going on. Um, so work is a little bit slower than I'd like. But we're still we're cracking on. We're making progress. Uh, I need to count... Um, I'm just about to start chassis wiring on the Doctor's Ainsley list to build. Ainsley is coming tomorrow to sign off the previous one and then we can get that shipped off. Um, and then I shall see you all. What else am I doing? Oh yeah, got the amplifonics to get sorted. But yeah, uh, hope. thank you very much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. It really helps grow the channel. And I shall see you all at the next one.